This is The Breakfast Stable. Good morning and welcome to The Breakfast Stable. My name is Jack Muller and it's lovely to be with you slightly on tour and from a remote special secret location. It isn't really. I'm in Blair Gary. It's nothing exciting. And I'm here with my stable mates as always joining me for a lovely Sunday morning. Good morning, Helen Riser. How are you? Good morning. I'm okay. A little cold. You know, we've actually, our weather's turned, so I don't like the cold. I know you do because you love the snow, no. but I love the beach. So. <laughs> well, she's at the beach, but it feels like the snow, right? Yeah. Correct. It's, I've got the, both things happening. So, you know, it's the same both worlds at the minute. <laughs> yeah. How are you, P. Hilke? Oh, look, I'm great. Feeling no, wonderful. No, you're not. We- you, we know, you know we know that you're we know that your my car's a bit rusty this morning. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, you, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm. I'm good. Mm. <laughs> We're going to find out a bit more about why you're yes. really slightly underdone this Where morning. Where you were last shortly. night. <laughs> Uh, if only people could see our conversations before we start um, the show, it would be amazing. Um, and Catherine Tabazia, good morning to you. You're never underdone. You're always well together. Oh, look, I tell you what, I didn't get much sleep last night. I was tossing and turning. I did a beautiful post the other day on my socials talking about switching off from work and having time out. And there I was tossing and turning until two or three in the morning. And one, one part of my, you know what, one part of my brain said, oh, I'll have to do a video about the show. And then, I'll, oh, I should, do, um, I should do an app for the business. And then the other part of my brain said, you should get some sleep. I'm like, oh, my God, <laughs> yes. what am I doing? It was 3 o'clock in the morning. So, yeah, look, I'm all good. There you are, saying, We must switch Cold off. Weekend. <laughs> and look, I normally do. I don't know what was going on. Must have been all the caffeine in that homemade tiramisu. <laughs> uh, wow. I'm coming over, Catherine. Oh, <laughs> please. It's so much... I, I made a bowl that big. Don't ask me why. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, you do have anyway. two thumbs. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're more savoury house than sweet. But anyway, it is. it was loaded with caffeine, so I think that was the culprit. Not the problem, yeah. Well, um, yeah, as you know, we the Griswolds went on tour and um, we've managed to get everyone, the dog and all and sundry, down to Blue Gary for a few days, which is fantastic. It's great to be actually out of the city. Um, even though it is um, below zero, it feels like down here. But um, we're all holed up um, in a very comfortable location, having a lovely old time of it. Um, so that was, that was, you know, getting the car, two cars packed. We had to get both cars packed and the dog, you know, is always a bit of a process. Um, and then we get down here and then, um, you know, Paul and I went down to do the local shopping, just that we'll get a few extra bits and pieces that we're going to need. And the Blair Gary shops are so cute. I have not are. actually... I've never actually chopped it before, but so we go into the local little gourmet supermarket and they have the tiniest little trolleys and, you know, they've the, got the, the little mini ones because, you know, you don't go there to do a month's worth of shopping. You're there to sort of do a few days' worth. And so it's all set up very nice, all the gourmet rubbish in there that you could, you know, poke a burnt stick at. But he looks so hilarious because he was, you know, he's six foot three and he's got this tiny little trolley. And so he looked like... <laughs> he, he, he looked like he had one of those little kitty trolleys that the kids have a cold or whatever it is. So <laughs> I said to him, I said, I think I'll take that off you. <laughs> because he was like looking at me and saying, he was looking at me as if to say, please don't make me push this ridiculous trolley. <laughs> so I took it off him. And we proceeded to whip around and of course, you know, you just buy jars of stuff and packets of stuff in those gourmet supermarkets that you never you ever do. Use. All of a sudden, you realise you want the braised fennel cheeks in pickled something something um, that Simon Johnson's created. And so we brought back half a dozen bottles of that and then the kids are like, where's the milk? Where's the cheese? Where's the, <laughs> where's the, where's the pantry staples? Yeah, exactly. We're like, hmm. But um, we are now, down here. social distancing down there? Or where you are? I mean, is it... Yeah, there was. Or are they a bit more relaxed? Yeah, no, no. It was actually probably more strict here than what it is back at okay. home. So we were out the front of the little gourmet supermarket. We, you know, had to stand, you know, okay. one point five apart and had to get time to go in. And they were sque- squeezing us with, you know, the sanitizer and all the rest of it before we went in. So it was, yeah, it was very, very ordered and very organised, but um, all very pleasant at the same time. Because obviously everyone's sort of on a weekend away, so everyone's happy to have a chat. Um, so, yeah, it wasn't so manic as what it is back home, that's for sure. But we're down here um, 
the Paul's uh, 50th birthday, which is amazing. Oh, it's a birthday oh, today. Happy, happy birthday, 50th. Paul. I know. Okay. Yeah, wow. so, you know, we're, we're I thought you were just doing some self-isolation, no? No, no, <laughs> we're, de- we're down here to celebrate his 50th birthday. Oh, and, you know, he is one of the good guys and he's an awesome dad and um, yeah. fantastic bloke all around. So we're oh. super happy to get to celebrate his 50th birthday. We've got mum and dad down here as well and my brother and his girlfriend. So oh, that's awesome. Lovely. Happy birthday, babe, to you. So, happy birthday. Um, <laughs> thanks, guys. Um, okay, so um, Catherine, you've got um, your usual bits and pieces that you want to cover off with us this morning. Well, I wanted to talk this morning about skincare ingredients and trying to decipher ingredient lists on product. Now, sometimes you'll get a product which um, comes in an outside packaging and the packaging gets thrown away and you may have a quick glance at it when you buy it, but then you forget what's actually in there. So I would say always have a really good look at the ingredients, maybe keep the box for a couple of days and have a good look at what's actually in the product. So... Normally, they're supposed to be, the ingredients are supposed to be listed in correct descending order. So that means that if it's a water-based product, like a a wash kind of gel, won't show any labels here, but you can guess what this one might be. Um, So if you're using like a wash or a shampoo, um, even a lotion, they are generally water-based. So you'll find that the first ingredient is is water. In an organic product, um, often they've substituted water for aloe. So all the aloe is really doing is enabling the product to be certified organic. So it doesn't need to be in there. It's actually in there to make it water-free. But actually, it's reconstituted um, aloe vera powder. So, you know, it's it's natural and that's great. And that's, that's a really good thing. Some of the things to look out for are in creams and lotions, they have synthetic Um, slip agent so it's what makes it feel nice on the skin even in conditioners actually they have the same type of thing they're called silicones and the way that Mm -hmm. you can identify those they normally end in o n e Mm -hmm. and they are actually synthetic silicon um, slip agents that actually cover the skin so i mean me personally i don't use those in our products and and i would avoid those Um, and of course things like petrochemicals you're, you're talking about paraffin mineral oil, um, and there's quite a few others as well, propylene glycol. They're on our sort of band list as a skincare formulator. Um, the, the paraben group sort of been in discussion for a number of years. So there's lots of different parabens, propyl paraben, butyl paraben, methyl paraben, etc. cetera. Um, but I did read reports about certain uh, group of parabens being linked to hormone disruption very early on when I was formulating my products. So I would say again, like if you've got sensitive skin or if you want to avoid uh, the more chemical type preservatives, avoid the paraben group altogether. Um, Some of the things that are being used these days do include things like potassium sorbate and sodium benzoate. So this is another great Australian brand um, that I've picked up from a beautiful salon in Balaclava. And the ingredients are quite small. So, I mean, you should be able to easily read the ingredients. So that's, that's mm. one thing I would say. But even if they're small, get your magnifying glass out and take a look at them. And the ones that you don't really understand, look them up and see if you're happy to use those on your skin. But they're two of the more recent sort of preservatives that are in the more natural and organic products. Some products don't need a preservative. So going back to, say, an, a, a waxy balm or an oily balm, the... The one that we've got doesn't have a preservative at all because the active ingredients and the natural vitamin E are in percentages that are high enough to actually provide some um, shelf life and stabilise the product. But, Mm. you know, if in doubt, mix it yourself. Try and get some sort of basic um, ingredients and just do a couple of little tests and blend things yourself. You'll find that you can easily wash your face with water or a floral water is really nice just to cleanse your skin um, or a really low sudsing... Uh, sensitive skin product that is natural and organic or even uh, we use our baby care to keep your makeup off your face and then you use the floral water on a cotton pad and you can see if there's any residue left but just they're the things that I would be aware of um I just want to when I'm in doubt sorry I was just going to say when I'm in doubt (laughs) I just ask Catherine you know yeah look I I know you do and (laughs) 
and that's great. So, I mean, you know, not everyone's got their, their natural skincare ingredient expert on hand. Yeah. But you can look, you can look. And look, I spoke to a journalist during the week and she said that she had um, problems with shampoo and her hair was even falling out. And then she switched to a sulfate-free shampoo and the problem seemed to rectify over a period of time. So like our nails, our hair is already dead keratinized cells. So you're not doing anything by putting a, mm. a conditioner on that's loaded with silicones. It feels nicer and it might be smoother. You're smoothing the hair shaft, but you're mm. actually not improving the condition of your hair because it starts inside at the follicle level and also when i was reading about uh, follicle health all those years ago so it's like 27 years ago i was formulating aroma baby and there was research out then that um, certain sulfates can actually damage the follicles so again it makes sense to be looking at something that is sulfate free if you possibly can and there's lots and lots of choices out there these days lots and lots of choice yeah um, I just wanted yeah. to give a shout out to a local business because uh, on Tuesday, it's actually International World Chocolate Day. Um, so our friends down at Cisco Chocolate, at ciscochocolate.com, are doing free local delivery to all around sort of their uh, Burundura council it is. So Camberwell, Baldwin, Doncaster, uh, Hugh Hawthorne, etc. And they're bringing back a take on the... Um, chocolate freckle i think they've got these huge chocolate mm. freckles there and also mm. chocolate crackles so if you're a big kid at heart oh, they can yes. do free delivery chocolate over 100 crackles. Anyway. gotta love a good old chocolate crackle and you know what they've got they've got vegan chocolate they've got gourmet standard you can buy your raw cocos and things there too but they've even done work for places like mm. uh, Rolls royce and bentley motors so they even do corporate beautiful corporate chocolate so oh. um head out there or, or check them out online amazing oh, and thank happy you, international Catherine. chocolate day for next week well that sounds just awful um and i don't need any <laughs> excuse to go into some dark chocolate or uh, certainly a freckle i think i'll just you know get get with the program and have They're about this big there freckles. Freckles. oh my god yeah they're good yeah I need to find a way to make a healthy version of a chocolate crackle, which I'm sure I can, um, using more sort of coconut oil and those sorts of things. I think you all cack out. They leave that one with me. I'll have to test well, we it. We do the ones on with the, the peanut butter in our house. So I suppose yes. if you have a, a good quality chocolate and you use the peanut butter, which is just basically ground up peanuts with no additives mm. at all, then, you know, that's, that's not too bad. <laughs> No, that's pretty good. We're well, speaking of all things. Thank you, Catherine, as always. Very informative, oh, and that was awesome. Um, and as always, Pete, in terms of food, you've always got great ideas and great concepts for us in c keeping it simple in the kitchen and getting on with it. Yeah, look, absolutely. But uh, firstly, we talk about being rusty. Now, last night, we actually went to Mr Brownie's. Jesse Singh <laughs> has done the world, has given the world a place that when you walk in, you think curry, you think British, it's got all the beers, curries, you are no longer living in Australia. It takes you on a journey. It's a destination to be desired at Mr. Brownie's in South Melbourne. And when it's in your doorstep, oh my goodness gracious me. Oh, wow. The beers were phenomenal. <laughs> That's a wrap. Oh, yeah, totally. he, oh well, he... he he just had, you know, there's a beautiful, a lot of vegetarian curries, lamb curries, uh, proper butter chicken. And I mean proper butter chicken. Wow. That is authentic. And when you put all this together, yeah, you wake up feeling a little bit rusty. <laughs> but it's, it's really, the great thing about it, it's got this real red glow throughout. You DJ playing there. The staff are phenomenal. They really look after you in every single way possible. It's one of those adventures that you need to get out. Uh, it's on the corner of Park and Clarendon. It's Mr. Brownie's Jesse Singh. I applaud you, my friend. <laughs> Outstanding work and a bit of a headache to wait for as well. Oh, good luck, Jesse. We, we, love, we love a new place to go. Congratulations on the opening, Jesse. Yeah. <laughs> And we yeah, know look, on the video you sent us all the bar wait staff were wearing little waistcoats and it looked amazing. It really looked and sounded amazing. Mm. So Oh look look Jesus. it was and they've just done such a fantastic job and actually just on the rooftop there chatting with Jesse last night, just getting a feel of what else he's gonna do to that place. Um, 
it's going to be a really great outdoor al fresco kind of dining vibe and the great the music so you've got this real upbeat bollywood music oh it's awesome 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 and for those yeah. people that don't know jesse or his establishments i suggest follow him on instagram jesse singh and you'll see mm. what he does he's got restaurants all over the place he does well, award-winning food yeah but Brownie's rooftop on Instagram, and you actually see everything that I'm talking about now. Um, you know, all the pictures and the work that he's really going, putting together to actually bring this to life has been phenomenal. But the other thing I want to talk yeah. about today, I had a request. Yes. Kim Darcy sent a request to me last week, and she said, Pete, we want to know just, you know, more of the home cooking, a few of the little intricate recipes that we can do at home. Now, Catherine, I know you're really, really good at um, putting <laughs> pasta sauces and that together, but let's keep this really, really simple and quick for everybody at home. Right, tomatoes. Roma tomatoes, I would say are best, right, because they're a lot sweeter. Mm. Right, I actually poach them in some water so I can peel them. Right, peel, get rid of the skin. Chop them up. Right, onion, garlic, and olive oil. And just until the onion's translucent, Add your tomatoes. I like to add some fresh dill, or you can use basil, but dill's beautiful. And then I just put the tomatoes mm. in, and then I'll just leave that go. Add a little bit of water, a little bit of liquid, and then just let it reduce. I get my uh, bar mix out, bzz, bzz, just like that. And you've got this beautiful homemade tomato sauce. It goes beautifully with seafood. And when you make homemade pasta like we did the other night, it's awesome. That is and me. how long will it keep for, Pete? If you if you really quickly, how long will it keep for if you freeze it? What's? Oh well, it will probably last for about three months. Okay, good. As I say, That's three months in the freezer. But because you're just using um, olive oil, yeah. natural ingredients, you know, and this is why Catherine's so wonderful in her business. She uses natural ingredients. The same in cooking. Natural ingredients. There's Absolutely. no sugars. Go for it, guys. Good. Helen, you've got lots to catch us up on really quickly before we have our special guest on today. Now that I've only got about 30 seconds, thanks, guys. <laughs> no. um, look, I, I just wanted to cover off a few amazing things that we can do over the holidays. Um, because, But I need to just let everyone know, you need to check what is open. We, rules and regulations are changing daily. Ours are changing daily. Um, due to, you know, whether it's a lockdown area or not, um, or near a lockdown area. So just really look it all up and uh, always look for the latest updates online. Uh, cinemas, there are lots of changes that will make everyone's experience more safe and enjoyable. There's only 20 people per session. But go and give cinemas. There's so many. They've all spent millions on refurbishing over the past few years. Um, the seat allocations are done really smartly where families and groups are together and then they'll have, you know, obviously divide. I mean, you, you probably get a row per person, I would say. Yeah. Um, then, you know, you now have to use your mobile to book a movie and pre-order your snacks. Um, and then it's all contactless, obviously contactless payment. Um, and the, the hygiene facilities, you've got to sanitise your hands before you go in. So it's all really full on um, amazing and they, you know, they want it to be safe. You cannot leave rubbish on the floor. They insist you have to throw your own rubbish now. You know, we used to throw That's it under the seat when we were young. And fair what? enough too. Yeah, so that they don't contaminate the staff. Um, and sea life- No more rolling jaffers down the aisle basically is what we're saying. Uh, no, Damn. no, especially if you've got them <laughs> in your hand and in your mouth. Yeah, definitely. So the aquarium, sea life, Melbourne, you can meet the penguins. There's little cute babies that you can meet. Lorraine, Whopper, Sparky and Quentin. Um, they're fluffy <laughs> little penguins, you know, running around. Uh, they were hatched earlier this okay. year. Um, and you, it's very chilly in there, so definitely rug up when you go to the aquarium, that part of it. Um, there's also this amazing uh, art vow in, at the Docklands. It's the, Australia's first immersive trick art gallery full of optical illusions and priceless photos. So you book your ticket online. Uh, kids will love it. Uh, there's seven days a week, 10 till 5 but they encourage you to take as many photos as possible and get the word out there. There were 15 artists that put it together. 
thousand litres of paint, 800 hours of work, and there's 80 wow. new arms for $20, $28 adult, uh, $18 for kids um, over a particular age, wheelchair access, so it's amazing. So definitely give that. And the other thing, laneways of Melbourne, you can do walking tours, it's two hour tours, you can go online, check the route uh, where you go, um, and it takes you all throughout the whole city. You get to know our city really, really well. And you get to see all the Art Deco buildings that we're famous for as well in Melbourne. Like, you know, Manchester United, Capital Arcade, Mallorca building. Um, and also the Melbourne Zoo. Um, you can now venture out to. And there, it's just the great thing about the Melbourne Zoo. If you go online, I checked it out last night. Very, very distracting. Um, so don't do it during work hours because I tell you what, you just gravitate to their live cameras and yeah. you can watch the animals live and it's just divine. So, um, so kids will love it. And also kids can now visit Melbourne Museum Science Works and the Immigration Museum. You can take virtual tours as well online. Um, and one more thing, the Western Melbourne have brought back the high cheese until September and it was very, very successful and sold out last year, but now obviously limited numbers. Um, and they bring in sweet and savoury cheese dishes uh, at $70 per head, available from 11 till 8 p.m. every day. Um, but they've got free-flowing um, coffees and teas. And if you want champagne, we pay extra for that. And you've got the take-home option of a cheese hamper. So, and don't forget, I did mention last week, Flemington uh, race course from the 10th of July. Mm. They've got their first drive-in uh, concert. Uh, so definitely check that out as well. But that's it for me. Good. And was that the short version? When? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Miss Helen, honestly. We never doubt your ability to know the ins and outs of everything that's going on. So thank God you. We do. Um, but uh, as every week, we've been really lucky to have a special guest wanting to join us on the show very shortly. Um, we are going to be speaking to the gorgeous and always lovely and pet friendly Lara Shannon. Well, we've got the most amazing guest today, uh, Lara Shannon, who is a passionate animal welfare advocate and certified dog trainer. Lara's been a regular on Australian TV and radio stations for the past two decades. Uh, in 2016, Lara created her show, Pooches at Play, a lifestyle TV show all about dogs that airs nationally on Channel 10. Series 5, congratulations, Lara, Pooches at Play, will be airing <laughs> from the 18th of July on Channel 10, and it will return to our screens at 2pm and promises to bring much-needed joy, entertainment and useful tips and advice for keeping both people and their pooches healthy and happy. Welcome, Lara Shannon. Hi, Hi Lara. Thank you. Yay. Oh, no, no one's here. <laughs> I love your, <laughs> your gorgeous pooches. <laughs> um, oh, yes, so Lara, so cute. Um, you've also we have Dynamite Darcy and this is his buddy, Harvey. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> now, you've also launched this book. You've been so busy. You've launched your book. Uh, which we love, Eat, Play, Love, uh, Your Dog. Oh, upside down. <laughs> uh, which is upside a party grant. And it's a paperback of, um, and it's uh, $29.99. Uh, you can buy online Correct. or in book, good bookstores and also at pet stock stores. That's right. Uh, tell us, you, I mean, you had to travel across Australia before COVID um you know producing the show because you're taking dogs on tour and you've shown <laughs> us where dogs can actually stay interstate and throughout victoria is that correct yeah that's right so um last series for series four we started a pet friendly travel special because obviously a lot of people want to go away and one of the biggest barriers is being mm. able to travel with your dogs so um that series went so well and everyone really loved it that we decided to to keep that theme going plus our usual training and health advice as well but um yeah this year we started we had some very grand plans um we got most of it done, fortunately. We went uh, for Caravan, Victor, Caravan Industry Victoria. We went through 
Bansdale, we went to Wodonga, Castle, Maine and Bendigo. Um, I just won't get to go to Brisbane. So that's our last episode. So my co-host Morgan will just have to head on his own because I'm definitely not wanted there. Wow, <laughs> wow. Okay. Because that, that is, uh, that, that's going to be very um, challenging actually. Uh, now with yes. Victoria yeah, being a little yeah, bit is. more... <laughs> I know. I had high hopes we might get there, but it looks like Darcy and I will have to hold the fort here in Melbourne. Um, in that episode, anyway, I've got to head off to Melbourne Zoo and meet um, some African wild dogs. So I'll I'll get to play with the wild dogs while wow. Morgan gets to play up wow. in Queensland. <laughs> so I mean, Lara, with um, you know, with your show and your book, you're also I mean, there's other projects uh, that you've been working on as well. We hear through the grapevine. <laughs> That's right, exactly, and you can get the scoop, so yes. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm an ambassador for Second Chance Animal Rescue and um, we've been working on a project uh, called The Pet Rescuers. So basically, Amazing. it's a factual show. Um, it follows basically the day-to-day -day operations of this shelter out in Craigieburn and the animal community hospital there. So sharing the stories of pet rescue, finding, you know, beautiful cats and dogs, their forever home. So, you know, it's been really wonderful. I get to do the fun stuff. I get to help raise money. Um, we were hoping to hold some parties. I still hope to hold a party soon in August. Um, and then I also get to visit some of the dogs that have found their forever home and just provide, you know, a bit of help, you know, help and advice to those that are struggling a little bit. Well, you know that I've got a pet rescue cat. So you'll have to come. I do. I own. do. Darcy, absolutely. Yes. She loves dog. He loves dogs. Sorry, and ah. um, he's just he's been with me a couple of months now, and I'm just I'm in love. So it oh, is, nice. Yes, we'll have to introduce Darcy. He's a bit scared of cats. Ah, okay. <laughs> so I'm working on that with him. So you've got great guests on the show uh, this season as well for season five. On the yeah. play, and um, yes. and Dr. Melissa Meehan is uh, coming back to give us healthy tips for dogs, and uh, I'm really excited to see her back on the show. I just love I yeah. love her. Um, it's great. To, yeah, it's great working with Dr. Mel. She gives those health advice that people, you know, we talk about vaccinations and even some um, diseases that dogs have not COVID, by the way, um, but things like roundworm. There are some zoonotic diseases that dogs have, which means that they can pass on to us humans if we don't help protect them in the first place. So Dr. Mel's going to have a chat with us um, about some of those. And it's really just comes down to good hygiene as well and making sure that your dog is wormed and treated and all their vaccinations are up to date. So she talks us through some of the importance of that too. Yeah, now we had the situation through COVID where we got Millie, who's our cavoodle, we took her to the vet and um, I think everyone else was worried about putting on weight, but the vet had said, look, she's, you know, chunked up a few kgs because the kids were all home and giving her treats all day because they were trying to teach her tricks and trying to do all these things. Yes. And you sort of forgot that, you know, I mean, my back was turned, obviously, and every five minutes the dog was in the laundry waiting for a treat, but it would bait his breath, but she ended up having to... Um, you know, go on a bit of a diet because she was getting fed all sorts of weird and wonderful things during the day because everyone was bored and wanted to treat her, treat her to treats. Absolutely. And that's a really big issue. That's actually something I talk about a lot in the show. So each week I talk about a lot of puppy tips, but obviously the big thing is not over-treating our pets because they treats should only make up no more than 10% of their total calorie intake. And it is very easy to over-treat them. So actually in my book, mm -hmm. there is a whole section on how to tell if your dog is overweight. You do this knuckle test. Okay. There's so many, like 40% of dogs are overweight and cats. So there's so oh. many owners that don't realise it. Um, and I do know that people always come to you with their pets that have weird issues and, and mental issues or, you know, uh, anxiety. Uh, so I know that you're, you're now quite an authority on this, on all these um, different uh, things that, that, you know, issues do come up with, with their, you know, with yes. dogs. And I love that you always find a reasonable and, you know, uh, explanation and how to get around, you know, various, issues that dogs may have so i mean tell us a little bit about that 
Yeah, look, most there are some very common issues and questions that I'm asked all the time. So some of the biggest things I see, and I'm probably, look, I'm not very diplomatic, you guys know me. Sometimes I just get straight to the point, and more often than not, it is the owner that is actually creating a lot of these issues in their dogs. And look, I'm I'm as responsible as any other dog owners of encouraging, you know, unwanted behaviour in our dogs. We love them so much and yeah. we just reinforce that bad behaviour. So some of the biggest things, I mean, is obviously anxiety is a major issue we're seeing now. We're seeing an increase in humans having anxiety and it's being reflected in our dogs. Um, a lot of that is because we have so many pets in confined spaces now that normally they would have their space but they're being thrown together we've got a lot of noise pollution we have a lot of anxious owners and we have a lot of people that don't read their dog's signs and aren't seeing those signs like licking of the lips yawning you know tail between the bum all those everyday signs that our dogs are saying hey look i'm not really comfortable they're constantly being pushed into situations they don't want to be in. And that's why we're seeing, you know, a big increase in reactivity, dogs having a go at other dogs or people, um, and then separation anxiety because we are spoiling mm. them, um, particularly mm. during ISO, you know, more and more people spending time with their dogs. So we really need to start independence training. So, Lara, I have a beautiful little Maltese poodle called Cooper. Now, can you give us some pointers on, because he's very anxious, he wheezes on the couch, and mm. even when he goes outside, he barks at, at um, greyhounds. Okay. <laughs> Specifically, <laughs> yes. Look, dogs can be very specific. On the anxiety and the fact that your dog is weighing on the couch, that is a really big indication that of separation anxiety, um, and it's you know quite severe. So there's a few key things that you can try first of all. There's things like a pheromone, a dactyl. You put a diffuser in the wall, it releases a pheromone like a mother releases to her puppies to make them feel safe and secure. Um, you can also get a collar that does the same thing. Thunder shirts are great because it wraps around them, makes them feel nice and secure. Calming music, um, leaving them when you leave, no excited at all, you know, see you later, just give them a long lasting chew or a chicken or duck tender. See you later, buddy, creating a positive association with you leaving. And when you come home, just nice calm greetings as well. They're where to start, give them a try and also leave them with interactive toys. Um, but if it doesn't get any better, severe anxiety does need to be treated potentially with some medication. So do see a vet. Um, on the greyhounds, Darcy has the same thing with German Shepherds. He had a bad experience as a puppy. Normally, that's the reason why, either a lack of exposure or a negative association. So what we want to do instead, when you see a greyhound coming, start creating that positive association, just shoving treats. Yes, 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 right? Stopping and reacting and then creating every time a greyhound comes near, good things happen. Yeah. Oh, that's great advice, Lara. It's so much. Thank you so about much. That. <laughs> it's like the same works for humans, right? Just give them treats. Same, that's right. Yeah. Exactly the same. <laughs> Lara, I was going to ask you about, look, I know that um, especially during lockdown, uh, COVID, but at other times as well, people often have um, an impulse desire to adopt a pet or uh, have a pet rescue um, join them uh, in yes. a home, or the children might want a pet for, for a gift or a birthday or something, but they haven't really thought through what that means and maybe they're not quite set up. And I've seen cases where they've bought a pet home and the pet's behaviour hasn't been great. Um, and the pet's been given away to another home or even yeah. worse and sadly um, put down because of poor behaviour. So what, what would you say about preparing the family and preparing the home to actually adopt, especially an older pet that may have, it's, it's already has some trauma or has some habits that might need to be changed or it might need a little bit of extra nurturing. What would you say about you know, families looking to, to bring in a rescue pet? Yeah, look, you know, a lot of people think these dogs are damaged. That's not necessarily the case. Um, it, you know, it really comes down to owners putting in the time. So if you're getting any dog, I ask people to really think about, have you got the time to do training? Have you got patience? to be particularly with older dogs or those that do have some issues. It requires a lot of patience and consistency. 
You need to have the finances to be able to invest in a trainer um, and also some of those tools that I mentioned to Pete about what you might need to help a dog with anxiety. Um, but you really need to think long-term. This is not a short-term commitment. I am very concerned about what's going to happen post-ISO, so I would ask mm. people to really start doing their research, look at the Pooches at Play website, um, get tips on how to overcome some of these behaviour issues so that you can set up your dog to win and not, not just give up when it all gets too hard. So one, think about the decision. If you've already made that decision, then start doing the work now because it's up to you. You can't expect a dog to fix itself. You need to show them what they need to do using positive training methods. So That's definitely great, provides a lot of Thank yeah. You. So look, you're a dog trainer, you dog walker, a dog enthusiast, dog lover. You've got the TV series Pooches at Play. Tell us again, where can we buy the book? Okay, you can buy Eat, Play, Love Your Dog pretty much anywhere. Um, all bookstores, it should be available online and at your local pet stop store as well or on their website. Uh, you can visit either my website, larashannon.com, for details or if you need some one-on-one -on -one, uh, training advice, I have that as an option to purchase as well over the phone. Um, but, of course, to really get started and help all the pet parents out there, visit poochesatplay.com. Fantastic. Thanks, Lara. Thank Thank you. Thanks for having us. Hey? Thanks, Lara. Lara, it's been an honour yeah. to have you on The Breakfast Table. So thank you so much for having thank the time. You, <laughs> say thank you, guys. And bye, yeah. bye, cuties. Thank you. Good thank luck, you, Lara, Lara, and the puppies uh -huh. for joining us today. I think I said that Lovely. right. Um, <laughs> coming on the breakfast table this morning. We really appreciate your time. Thank you once again, Helen, Catherine and Pete. Always lovely to see you, my gorgeous friends. Um, I'm going to go and cook a roast. So I will see you all next weekend on the breakfast table. Thanks for joining us. Happy Sunday. I'll go to the <laughs> Bye.